Good morning folks, I've come in this morning, we've obviously had the weekend away in Leeds which was fantastic, but we've come back and the fermenters are struggling to get back down to temperature which leads me to believe that there's either a blockage or a restriction in the cooling pipes, which last week or the week before we moved to the other side of this here wall, so we're going to have to figure out where that blockage is coming from, we've basically just got a little trickle of the cooling glycol coming out of the return pipe so we'll test the feed if we've got a good gushing power on the feed then I'm pretty sure that isn't the problem and we'll have to examine a little bit further as to exactly what is causing the lack of cooling on the system so a bit of problem solving to do this morning before we get into full swing with the rest of the day and there's a lot to do so we've had to pull all this shelving back out folks and what I've done is change out the pipe for a larger diameter. So we were using this beer line. And whilst I agree that this is suitable for supplying one fermenter from one maxi cooler to chill 500 litres of beer, it just simply cannot carry the amount of fluid required, even with a bigger pump to cool three so what we've done is we've swapped the whole thing out for this 15 mil pipe you can of course use barrier pipe what they use in home installations but this stuff is for the industry this is what they use for carrying glycol and whatnot to um remote chillers outside uh, but of course with it being 15 mil or half inch pipe it's much more suitable for carrying uh, enough of the coolant to the back of these three fermenters to enable each one to then have uh, enough flow so it can pull off the cooling it requires. So hopefully these temps will start to come down now. It has been set at uh, 11 degrees, just the start of the cold crash, whilst we put the second hop addition in which should have gone in already today but unfortunately we've been doing this so all I have to do now you can see there's a bubble travelling across there look I don't know if you caught that there we go so we know that it's definitely look at that it's definitely pumping the uh, glycol back to back, back to the storage tank oh brilliant well that's good news because we weren't even seeing any any kind of flow like that at all before and now you can see it get in on that pipe might be able to see a bubble come by and I think that's the last of them anyway I've just got to insulate this side of it now which shouldn't be too easy a couple of straight runs and then straight down and then this just needs kind of tying in under there like that and it'll be tucked nicely out the way I might move those two clips actually across a little bit they look like they're putting some pressure unnecessary pressure on that looks a little bit neater doesn't it and then we're going to push the IBC back which is going to be a bit of a pain in the arse now because well she's full hey ho okay folks well we've got the glycol working again over there that's operational and in the meantime we've also received this humongous bag of stainless steel from GC so there are a few other things that arrived in this package but we'll talk about that later on what I want to do at the moment is put together our duplex system for the small pilot kit which is going to allow us to uh, change the filter which is this little Y strainer here uh, we can change from one filter to the other now you may have seen this on Tom's channel it's an idea that we've been batting about back and forth and he's got a couple of these Y strainers as well 
and uh, this is something that we've put together to allow us to filter the liquid going into the pump from the boil kettle so it doesn't get blocked up with hops and the like and if any of these filters do get blocked up you can just close one side off and continue to use the alternative side to uh, allow continuous flow of wort during the brew day whilst you clean these filters out so there's one thing I've noticed on this filter though that inside it does actually have another filter mesh so we've got about 0.7 millimeter holes here which is perfect then on the inside there seems to be a microfine mesh filter I'm going to actually remove that so if you get the similar Y strainer from GC supplies you may want to remove that particular mesh because I think it'll just clog up really quickly so it's been a bit of overkill really and we're also noting the flow of the arrow in the back there and then we're just putting together a series of valves like this these are stainless steel valves as well available from GC supplies so let's just have a look what we're going for next next I think we want a street elbow to go on there like that same on the bottom there we are we'll just mock this up and then on the other side we're going to do exactly the same so we want two of these valves then we want two uh, parallel nipples on each valve they're called parallel because they're there's no gap in them, it's a straight nipple all the way across, there's no taper. That's that one. That's that one. Just about. There we go. Then in the centre of that, we're going to be locating our strainer I've not opened this one up yet I need to really give them a, a little tweak on the vise because they are well seriously stiff so all will make sense any moment now and I'm going to go ahead of course afterwards and use some PTFE thread tape to make sure that these are all in the correct position. Uh, let's have a look. Street elbow on the top again. And then these elbows are going to go into a T like this. Oh, that will be fun, actually. Assembling that. Yes. How we're going to get the bottom elbow on is the question. There we go. So we're beginning to look something like now space station there we go and then finally we are going to want one last street elbow on here and we're going to have to thread that into there somehow, so this is where I'm going to have to get my problem solving head on. Because this ain't going to be easy. But ultimately, that needs to connect into there. And then at either end, we're going to have basically just a 
tri-clamp, not tri-clamp, a cam lock fitting. And then what we can do is we can flow wort down one side of the system down there while the other side is isolated and then once this filter blocks up we can simply isolate that filter we can open up the reserve and then we can take this filter apart clean it put it back it's ready to go when we need it so there we are when I've put this together I'll give you a better shot of it finished but that is what the whole assembly is going to look like essentially so that's called a duplex filter assembly I believe and there it is folks so this is like the uh, the duplex filter system put together but it's not exactly 100% how I wanted it so I had problems threading it together so what I've done I've made it in two halves and I've just used a couple of cam lock fittings so we can basically just put it together like so it is a little fiddly to begin with but I'm sure once I've done it a few times it will not be a problem so there we go gotta press that in there there we go that's one side done and then we'll push this section home and close that down and it tends to want to just pop out so let's stick the safety pins in to stop this little grenade of a machine going off we'll do the same down this end and we're going to give her a test ride see if it actually works or it's a waste of my time so I brought in the hose pipe here on this connector just lift the angle up a touch we're going to pop them on here we'll lock it off and try and position it where it don't fall off when I pressurise it I'm going to go and turn the tap on right that's now pressurised at mains so let's see what happens when we open right I need to tighten that little fellow down but that's a good sign means that it's watertight so far there we go right that's also watertight and well there we go we've got water coming out that side I've got a good shot on it for you there we go so let's isolate that and isolate that now let's go down the other side there we go again a slight leak on the filter head easily nipped up so remember this is what will be coming on and off to change or unblock the filter then let's go this end as well and there we are so it does work so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a blanking cap in here so pretend this is the pump this is how it will connect to the pump and then that'll be on the inlet of the pump and then we can open the valves again and just see if indeed we are watertight there seems to be a little drip coming out of here so maybe that one needs nipping a touch I don't know if I can do it here or not it doesn't seem to be a lot so there we go it's kind of how it's gonna look on the uh, on the brew stand if that makes any sense yeah we do have a couple of leaks look so I'm gonna have to just go back to the old drawing board just tighten them up 
but it gives you an idea as to what we are actually looking for. It would have been nice to have everything in line. I just can't seem to get it to happen. So before I put that little contraption together there, I put together these three mounting plates for the pump. So the idea is we take our uh, brew pumps and I'm just going to use a couple of nuts to temporarily locate the pump and then we're going to put this in position with the uh, filter assembly connected and then mark out on the brew stand where these mounting plates want to reside and then we'll bolt or weld these plates onto onto the brew stand in a moment so there we go so we can see that it's not really not really long enough is it doesn't look like it's really quite as long as I had anticipated maybe if we put it in on a bit of an angle like that that looks a little easier maybe there I think that should work actually so I'll just pull this off let's mark it up first It's all very awkward at this stage. Right, so then if we mount that kind of there, I think that'll look fine. And then at least we know that the brew stand is taking a fair amount of the weight. I wonder if I could mount it diagonally like that. No, actually that's not quite what I'm looking for. Yeah, I might have to revisit this then because I wanted to be able to take the housing off here and rotate it so I'm going to have to give this a little bit more thought we may have to just revert to the original idea of having it mounted there and then this assembly will connect onto the front like that but it's a little bit further out in no man's land than I actually wanted it to be we'll see, we'll see, I'll come up with something right folks you'll notice now that we've put on these little diagonal braces and they're going to house the pump mounts which you can see just there in the middle of the shot so I'm going to set the camera up, we're going to get the welder out and we're just going to tack these on so I'm going to try and get the shot from the other side of the brew stand, I don't know whether this is going to work or not just got to hook up the earth cable so I don't electrocute myself there we go Grab the torch, grab the foot pedal, and grab what's left of my filler rod. That's the rain torch. There we go. So let's see if we can start off maybe this side. I did put some marks on, but then I changed my mind a little bit because I, w I wanted to change the balance of the piece. There we go, look, it's just moving all over. I might just have to tack this side first, just to prevent it from wobbling around too much. That will do. And then I can't really see very well. But we'll give it a whirl. Hopefully, this is working. I think we've got it good enough. And we'll just finish filling this side over. I've hardly got no filler rod left now. So this is a bit of a cheeky weld. 
where I'm actually trying to pinch quite a lot of the plate to use that as filler. That's not something I'd recommend, but because it's going to be hidden under the pump, I don't think it's going to be too bad. So there we go. That's one plate on. So I've just got the other two to do, and I think that will give us sufficient support to mount all pumps and the filter and all that kind of jazz. I do have my fingers crossed a little bit that it's going to be in the right place, but we hope. There we go, fingers crossed. Just a little bit further down the road. So what we've done is grab the hose pipe and we put on the assembly and I've decided to mount the sight glass on the inlet. So I'll just open that. You see we've got water flowing. Obviously you can't see a lot coming through here because of course it is uh, clear water. Maybe if I just tweak, might get some air bubbles drawn in. Probably not, it's just gonna end up <laughs> bursting off. But yes, so what I've actually done is put the sight glass on the inlet then pretty much everything that comes out of that boil kettle is going to go through this pump so regardless of where we're going to send it plate chiller back into the kettle for recirc or to a fermenter for fermentation we are always going to be able to see what's going on in there that's the plan anyway so what I've done is hook it up to the mains and this is now sat at 2 bar around 50 psi and we've got no leaks so that's a very good sign I've carefully tweaked and adjusted the sight glass this was leaking top and bottom but uh, on this particular sight glass there's no bottoming out on the thread so you really have to just play it by ear be very careful when you tighten it that's why I pressurised it first and then I just tightened it until the leak stopped and bingo bango she's good to go so all we're going to do now is disconnect the water and this section is put to bed as you can see the mounts have worked a treat they look spot on and so does that one down there and to take a little bit of the weight and stop it flapping around in the wind that I've also just welded on this little bracket it's not tightened down yet but I don't think I'm gonna have to tighten it down it kind of works then all we need to do then to get from the boil kettle to the top of the side glass is just a short piece of pipe across there not gonna be a problem and then we're gonna come out the top of the pump which is in there and we'll go either to the research port up at the top or into the side of that plate chiller once we get it installed and we're probably just going to mount it on this leg here maybe with a couple of tie wraps but I think that's it for today folks we've done quite a good job I'd say we've actually got all of the pumps on they do need wiring up we've got the filter manifold sight glass all sorted and we've got all the other pipe fittings just over there ready to go on the machine on the brew stand i am a little however disappointed that the heat sink hasn't arrived yet for the uh, top of the control panel there is a tracking number and it said that there's been a problem at a raw mail depot who knows how long that's going to be held up it was an expensive heat sink as well so I'm not happy uh, so what I'm going to do is go upstairs and open a case with eBay because I need to get that sorted I can't fit everything else onto the control panel until we've got until we've got that heat sink uh, I think I'll just address a couple of questions before I go people have been asking where did I get the sticker from well I made it I made it on Inkscape 
so you can make your own because you know what your control panel is going to be like. Uh, I'm not going to send you a copy of mine because I forgot to put the reset button on there so I'm going to have to rejig it and put the reset button on the side of the panel but uh, you'd have the same problem if I sent it to anybody. I might put it on the website in the future but I, the website's really not the top of my list at the minute. Uh, so I designed it on Inkscape and then I just got in touch with the local printers and asked them to print it on some sticky back plastic essentially and uh, it was Iron Tree Designs. If you want to send them your design they'll print it and probably post it for you at a reasonable price. IronTreeDesigns.co.uk I think they are and uh, they're just next door to us that's why I use them. And then we've just got like a clear coat sticky back plastic on the top to keep it uh, bonded and dry. But that's it, all I can think of actually for today folks. So I'm going to sign out, uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Uh, most of my time today went on fixing that cold root, that chiller issue. So hopefully we can get in tomorrow and we can get some real progress made on this build. I need to put it to bed because I'm away this weekend watching the rugby in Newcastle and I've got to take beer out of the tanks. So it means we may just have to put the brew build on hold for a week or so until we come back from that. Anyway folks, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.